We play and call it work. Hey there guys, you got Luca and Steve here from Mini Wargaming here to unbox Shadespire. So it's Warhammer Underworld Shadespire. This is a it's like a rendition of Mordheim, I guess. It's like yeah, it's, it's like it's like it's their skirmish scale game. Very tiny war bands. And they're gonna be coming out with a bunch of them right now. We only have two in the opening box. We're gonna crack it open for you guys and show you everything that's inside. And right after that, we're gonna jump into the vault and play a game for you guys too. If you want to check out how the game plays. Warhammer Underworld Shadespire, a fast-paced tactical game of arena combat. <laughs> Let's open her up. First things first. Game board, it looks like. You got two of them. And uh, Carport's Ruse, rule book, with assembly guide on the back. Pretty important. Games Workshop game. So, of course, we got Spruce, plastic Spruce. Looks like uh, Stormcast, already painted blue, already painted red for the Reavers. Not one, not two, but three different uh, decks of cards. Lots and lots of little plastic baggies for everything. Ooh, interesting, unique dice. Not ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives, and sixes. Shadespire. This was just the beginning. Ooh, it's like a, it's like an expansion kind of thing. On the back, Age of Sigmar. Oh, their little placeholder Age of Sigmar ad. Starting out, we've got assembly guide and quick reference guide for rules throughout the game. The actual rule book. Opening up, we got ooh, narrative stuff. Lots of stories. We have the starting war bands. So you can see right off the bat, there's gonna be a lot of options. And set up how to play the game. Pretty much all the core rules what happens throughout the rounds, and board setups. Let's open up this and see what we got. Oh, cardboard sprues, cardboard sprues, more cardboard sprues, and two battle boards. Nice. Looking at the battle boards, uh, they are pretty long. Pretty long. And they're double-sided for, I guess, different deployments. Looking at the tokens, there's a whole bunch of like a lot of coins, uh, skull symbols, shade spire symbols, different objectives, up to nine it looks like, and just a bunch of, I'm assuming, like movement oriented tokens and wound tokens. Inside the box is also three decks of cards. One's labeled Liberators, one Blood Reavers, and the other is Extra Cards. Each of the decks are broken down into objectives, power cards, and character cards. And the third deck just has objectives and power cards used, you can use to swap into your decks to make your decks more customizable. And we got black and white dice with a bunch of weird symbols. Bam! Red spruce for Reavers, blue spruce for Liberators. This is what they look like put together and painted, because I'm that fast. The first warband is Steelheart's Liberators. It consists of Severin Steelheart, Oberyn the Bold, and Angerhad Bright Shield. Next warband is Garrick's Reavers, led by Garrick Gorebeard. He also has Crassus the Chained, Bloodseek, Targor, and Arnulf in his warband. Taking a close look at the cards now, you see the number by my thumb in the bottom left corner there is number four. That's how fast he can move. He moves four hexes. Next one over is his defense die. He gets to use one die, and he's looking for that little dodge symbol when he makes a defense. After that, you get a big red four and a you know, red circle. That's his wounds. He has four wounds. Now above that, you see other stats. That's his blood drinker axe. That's his attack action. It allows him to attack one hexagon away. He rolls two dice and looks for hammers and it does two damage if he succeeds. Other than that, you see that gold bar? He has an Inspire ability. When the Inspire ability is met for each one of these characters, they flip over and become a new card. So for his Inspire ability, and actually all the corn Inspire abilities are, once three fighters are dead, they all get all blood crazy. So Garrick himself gets five movement, and he has one more damage on his attack. To give another example, we got Blooded Say, he's got a big axe. So his uh, attack action is one attack, looking for hammers, two dice, and but three damage when he goes through his movement and dodge and health, or well, he's got three health instead, he's a leader. But when he becomes inspired, he changes completely almost. Well, not completely. He gains cleave on his attack, which means that the opponent cannot roll shields when they go in to defend against his attacks. Which is really cool, because most of the Stormcast, all the defense dice are shields. You see that one in the center of the bottom there? That's a shield. He needs to roll shields. So he, once he gets inspired, chops through some armor. There'll be no saves at all, almost. Next interesting reaver is Karsis the Chain. Now you'll notice right away, he's got two different attack actions, which have two different profiles. One has a range of two, one has a range of one. They both require, or they both have three dice that require swords. One does one damage, one does two. Now, when he becomes inspired, he gains a special ability on the right there called Savage Whirl, which replaces his bottom attack um, action. So it's one distance, two dice, looking for swords, two damage, but it targets all the adjacent enemies. So for each enemy that is adjacent to him, we roll separately. Arnulf is one of the weaker guys in the warband. He only has two wounds. He only has one damage on his attack action, but if he rolls a critical, it deals an extra damage. Now, when he gets inspired, he rolls an extra die for his attack, and he gets one more move. 
So Targor has got one attack action, two wounds himself. He's on the lower spectrum of this warband. When he becomes inspired, the only difference is he does two damage on his attack if it goes through. Actually, he gets an extra attack as well, I believe. Yep, so one extra die to roll when he attacks. Time for the Stormcast. Severin Steelheart, as you can see with the crown, is the leader of this warband. He's only movement three, and he has a different defense die. He, roll, he needs to roll shields instead of the dodge, and he's got four health as well. And his Inspire ability is quite different. This fighter rolls a shield or a critical when the, uh, when the target of an attack, he becomes inspired. But before that, looking at his weapon, he's got one attack action, one range, two dice, looking for hammers, and three damage if it goes through. Now when he's inspired, he becomes Steelheart inspired. He's got two different attack actions. One is Mighty Swing, one is Sigmarite Broadsword. Now the Mighty Swing one, it targets all adjacent enemies. So, but you have to roll for each of them separately, and it does one less damage than the broadsword. And he rolls two dice when he defends instead of just the one, which is massive. Moving on to an interesting character, Angerod Bright Shield. One of the first, or I think this is the first female Stormcast I've seen. She's got the Sigmarite Hammer, one range, three dice, and two damage if it goes through. Uh, other than that, when she becomes inspired, she, like, all of these Stormcast guys are cool when they become inspired. Furious Parry is a reaction, so during an attack action that targets this fighter and has failed, this fighter cannot be driven back, and you make this attack action if uh, it must target the attacker. So, essentially, if she's attacked, she gets a free attack back with the Furious Parry, which is one range, two swing, or two dice, one damage. Other than that, she still has a Sigmarite Hammer, three dice, looking for hammers, two damage. And again... Gaining the extra def uh, defense die when defending. Over in the bold with the big hammer, the Sigmarite Grand Hammer. One range, two dice to attack, three damage if it goes through. Same movement, defense, and health profile, and same inspired ability. When he, oh sorry, forgot to mention, his hammer actually has knockback one, which just knocks people back further one. Oberyn Inspired, on the other hand, has the Grand Hammer still. Same profile with Knockback 1. But he's got Overhead Strike, which has got Cleave. So again, Cleave means you do not get any shield defense when you're cleaving. We're going to go into a little more detail on the three types of cards that are found inside Warhammer Underworld Shadespire. You have Objectives, Ploys, and Upgrades. So we have, here are the Objectives, middle is Ploy, you notice with the sword in the top corner here, and then Upgrades with a little gear symbol. Uh, ploys and Upgrades are blue back cards, and Objectives are gold. Ploys and upgrades are both going to be the same deck, the power deck. So the game is won by who obtains the most glory throughout the game. So this card here, for example, if you have Awe Inspiring in your hand, score this immediately if your Warband has taken two or more fighters out of action this phase. Then you get one glory, that one little sun symbol right there. Two, three, four, I think you've seen some five glory cards in this thing. Next over, the ploy cards. This one here is Peel of Thunder. Choose an enemy fighter and push them one hex in any direction. So after an action is made, you get to actually have an option to play cards, and your opponent gets to play cards as well. So you can do something like charge and then move guys around with this particular ploy. And your glory can also be used to spend uh, upgrades here. So you can use uh, one glory, put this upgrade on somebody. It's called Great Fortitude and gives them plus one wound. Now there's a bunch of different ones in the game and the actual whole third deck for customizing your deck as well. Adding an extra card there just to show you one thing. On the top right corner, we have different symbols. Now, the first symbol here is the Sigmarite symbol, so it can only be in the Sigma or the Liberator deck. The next one is the Corn symbol, can only be in the Corn deck. And the one on the very right, the Shadespire symbol, means it's neutral and it can be in any deck of your choice. Going to quick detail about the decks themselves two separate decks, power and objective. The objective deck always has to have 12 cards and it cannot have any more and it cannot have any less. So it's very restrictive. Now the power deck on the other hand is way more open. It, you, the only There's two restrictions. You have to have at least 20 cards in the deck and of those cards in the deck, no more than half rounding down can be ploy cards. So you have to have a good split of ploy and upgrades in your deck. So you can have 40 cards in your power deck, 50 cards in your power deck. Though personally, I would recommend you only have 20 of your best cards so you always draw something good, something of value. One more thing to show you for the upgrade cards. Now these are, if you're familiar really with Magic the Gathering or like enchantments, and some of them have restrictions, like Lightning Blast here. So when they make a critical hit, this fighter also inflicts one damage on enemy fighters adjacent to the target hit. So that's really cool. The thing is, it only targets Oberyn. So if Oberyn's dead, this is a dead card in your hand. You cannot use it. Next up, let's talk about the battle boards. So they have a bunch of different hexagons on them with different symbols. The Shadespire ones means that's where you deploy your army. And these are your personal battle boards. So you bring these with you when you want to play a game. And they're double-sided. And the starting set comes with two different ones. So they're both different. And they're both double-sided. So it gives you a lot of different ways to set up your armies and your boards. Looky, looky what we got here. So not only do you have the two starting factions, Games Workshop's also releasing these along with the game. 
We got Iron Skulls Boys and the Sepul the Sepulchral Guard. So we have Undead and Orcs. And in each of these sets comes with the Warband, all the Snap Fit Sprues, in addition to two decks. So the starting deck they come with and the optional deck to augment your starting deck. Personally, I am very happy they're including these two extra Warbands in addition to the Corn and the Stormcast. Now, the, the decks in here, the extra deck that I can add to your deck has neutral cards in it, which you can also throw into your other decks that come from the starter set. So there's a lot of flexibility with the neutral cards. I'm sure you'll see a lot of the same neutral cards, but again, you have a ton of, just a ton of options, essentially. There you go, folks. That's the contents of Shadespire with the two expansions underneath. Now, the options for customization and everybody, like every, all the warbands are the same, but the opponents you come across are going to have vastly different decks for the most part. And that's where the fun of this game is going to come in, is building your own personal deck, building your warband the way you want to play. You could have Reavers be super defensive, or you can have them super offensive. And I'm sure the same goes for every other warband. You could just have Stormcast just never die. You just got healing potions and all that jazz. And <laughs> I don't know. I'm really excited. I know personally I'm going to go for the uh, Sepulchral Guard. And I'm pretty sure Steve wants to go for the Iron Skulls. Yeah, I'm jumping on the Morks. The boys. There you have it. There's the contest, the unboxing of Shadespire. Now, Luke and I are going to vault right now and play a game. I am super excited for this. We played one test game yesterday, and it was actually a crazy amount of fun. I absolutely love war band type I games. I know. I love these little skirmish war band games. This is going to probably be my new favorite. So, and let's go into deck the game building. right now and watch that deck building. I know. I know. We, have, <laughs> we have skirmish war bands and deck building. This and a is board. All and a board. It's got a board, too. <laughs> this, this would be great. So, if you want to take a look at that game, watch out. Uh, wait, watch wait. the first. What are you playing? Oh, are we going to rustle for this? What do you want? Corn. <laughs> uh, rock, paper, scissors? Rock, paper, scissors? Be best of one or best, uh, best of three? First one, one. Rock, paper, scissors, go! Okay. I'm Corn! I'm Liber the vault right oh, now. I'm Liberators. Just play this. The first game. I think if you watch it, you might want to buy it, so it might be worth watching. Thanks yes. for watching, everybody. Happy Wargaming.